Welcome to Get Better Basketball Live. I'm Coach DeMarco, and in today's episode, I'm going to give you a complete breakdown of Georgia Tech's 131 zone defense and show you the similarities it has to Jerry Tarkanian's 113 amoeba zone that he ran when he was at UNLV. Josh Pass and his 131 zone has been a great equalizer for Georgia Tech all season as they mix it in with their man to man defense. You're not going to want to miss this episode as I give you a complete breakdown of the unique way that Georgia Tech runs their 131 zone. Before I do, make sure you hit that like button down below, turn on your notifications, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more great content each and every week. Another Get Better Basketball Live is up now. As we get ready to take a look at Georgia Tech's 131 zone, I want you to take a look at a traditional 131 zone used by Xavier and note the point player and the player at the free throw line. So as we take a look at this clip, I want you to think about the point player from the Xavier 131 zone and also this free throw line player as well. Because in a traditional 131, teams either like to trap with this point player in a wing, or they kind of angle the ball with this point player. And a lot of times he'll kind of work from side to side at the top, which is why teams often will put a two guard front against the one, three, one, an even front against an odd zone and kind of make that player work at the top and also make the baseline player work. But Georgia Tech zone is a little bit different. And what we'll notice, not when the ball is thrown way out here on the wing, but as it gets swung to the opposite side, is this middle player is going to come out and guard the ball, and this player is going to actually drop back. So they kind of stunt at the ball and drop back. This is similar action to what we see in a 2-3 zone, but also in a 1-1-3 amoeba zone. In an amoeba zone... And I'll show you this in a clip again from Jerry Tarkanian at UNLV. This player and this player are pretty much interchangeable. This player will guard the ball and this player will drop to the middle. And then if the ball goes to the other side, this player will guard the ball. And then this player right here will drop into the middle. In a traditional 1-3-1, one, one, we don't see that same type of movement. So this is Georgia Tech putting their own wrinkle on the 131 zone. You could certainly argue that it's more of a matchup type zone where they're matching up the players in certain spots on the floor. But either way, it's different from the traditional 131 zone where this point player is going to work more from side to side. You'll notice that the point player in the middle are more interchangeable like the amoeba zone used by Jerry Tarkanian. As I watched these clips, I almost thought it was more of an amoeba zone, except these two wing players are out a little bit higher than is typical in the amoeba, but it definitely presents itself in similar fashion to a 1-1-3 zone. So let's just bring it back to Jerry Tarkanian's 1-1-3 zone, and I want you to really look at the point player and the middle player in the zone and how they're interchangeable. As we look at this clip again, I think you'll see some similarities to Georgia Tech's 131 zone, except for the wing players tend to be a little bit lower. But I do think Josh Pastner has done a nice job putting a wrinkle on the traditional 131 zone and almost making it more of a hybrid type zone. Again, with Xavier's 131 zone, notice the difference in the point player and the middle player at the free throw line and how that point player moves back and forth from side to side, where we remember in the Georgia Tech 131, the middle player came out and guarded the players out on the wing. So a little bit different than what we see here. So as we bring it back to Georgia Tech one more time, you can see how their 131 is really a hybrid between the 113 amoeba zone, where this player actually comes out and defends on the wing and this player drops back, and the more traditional 131, where this player is going to actually work 
over from their top position and sort of close in on the ball to the side. I also think you have to look at the overload alignment that Florida State is using with a player on the wing, a player in the corner, a player on the block, and a player at the top, that that kind of forces this player to come out onto the perimeter in some situations. So depending on the alignment, you know, it could happen in more of a traditional 1-3-1. But from what I've seen from Georgia Tech, is they like to take this player, work him out to the wing, let this player drop back, and have these two players sort of interchangeable in their 1-3-1, which again plays very similar to the 1-1-3, as we see here, this player working from the middle out to the wing. What I love about breaking down film is that you really have to get into the mind of the coaches and think about why they're doing the things that they're doing. As I noted in this video, Florida State is matching an odd front defense with an odd front offense, which is not the typical case. A lot of teams like to split an odd front defense like a 1-3-1 and use some type of 2-1-2. So that could be the reason for Georgia Tech adjusting with that middle player. But I also believe that it's based on their personnel and they really want to keep that post player underneath the basket at home instead of putting a smaller player down on the block who could become a mismatch for the opposing team. Whatever the case, Georgia Tech definitely is playing a unique defense that is a hybrid be between a typical 1-1-3 amoeba zone and a traditional 1-3-1 zone. If you like this video, then make sure you hit that like button down below turn on your notifications, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more great content each and every week. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you thought about this video and also what other video breakdowns you'd like to see. As always, get better every day.